our next speaker is Jean-Michel Sellerier, whose passions include art and code and computer music. He combi combined these ideas in his uh, PhD thesis on authoring interactive media. And he is now an, an independent researcher and is with the OSIA IO nonprofit, where he is a lead developer on OSIA, the open software system for interactive applications, where he tries to bring some of the results of his research to the broad masses of interactive artists out there. In his talk, he will show us that interactive media can be so much more than just a movie with three different pre-recorded endings you can choose from. Yes, a warm welcome to Jean-Michel Sellerier. Hey, thanks. And this was, I think, the best introduction I ever got. So <laughs> I'll try to remember it for the next time. So um, hello, everyone. So um, um, I'll be mainly pre presenting and doing a small demonstration of um, OSIA Score, which is a free software that we've been developing with um, the OSIA that I own profit for something like, well, we are not far from 10 years now. Uh, which is a kind of a free software sequencer to combine various kinds of uh, media. We call that intermedia. So, um, for instance, video, sound, but also controls with hardware devices and uh, inputs that uh, people may not expect at first to be part of um, interactive art artworks. Um, so, is the screen share? Um... Okay. So. Um, for the first few minutes, I'll quickly explain how the software looks. Then for something like 20 minutes, I'll go and try to build some scenes from scratch to, to show what are the capabilities of the software. Um, then we'll be able to discuss. And if you have any question, I'll be super happy to answer them. So the software is a uh, sequencer. So if any of you do music, you may know uh, the simple paradigm of um, putting a sound on timeline, hitting play and so um, this is the most simple thing one can do, but um, what is less common in uh, this kind of software is also the ability to um, put not only sound, but also video content. So like this, for instance, so I can also come and take some uh, video effects and say, okay, you will play at the same time than my sound. And of course, with various levels of controls on these systems. So this is the, the very basic, the, the very gist of it. And uh, now I'll try to, to build something that, um, well, bring some sound. So first, the first thing that one has to do when using score, and if anyone wants to follow the same steps while I'm doing the presentation, uh, the software is uh, freely downloadable at uh, uh, the um, OSIA.io website, so feel free to 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 strum to to roam along and try to do do stuff at the same time. It's always good to have people trying it. And so the first thing that one may want to do is to um, first define which kind of peripherals we are going to use for our interactive artwork. So for instance, here on my desk, I have um, a joystick, I have a keyboard, I have this little thing which is called a lip motion, which uh, is a kind of camera for hand gestures. And all these things have parameters that we are going to be able to use uh, as part of the performance. So for instance, if I add my lip motion here, and um, you can see some tables of number moving, and that is the uh, position of my hand, for instance, things like that. Um, this, I also want to use my uh, trusty uh, MIDI keyboard, and uh, I will turn some parameters. So I'm hitting the parameters that I want to use for the controls. Okay, here 
so this gives me an array of things that I can use to map to, to sound effects, things like that. And what else do I want to use? Um, let's see. Oh, I want to use a joystick. Okay, so this is basically the raw material for the interactivity of uh, the work. Oh, okay, and I'm getting a fantastic demo effect. That is great. Uh, where are we? Okay. Uh, this uh, and uh, and so I'm mostly using Linux and uh, this software is mainly developed under Linux but if you want to try on other systems of course it also works on Mac and Windows and we are especially in need of people who um, try it on embedded like Raspberry Pis and things like that and if you want to try on various embedded boards and reports then please tell us and it's super useful things to know. Um, so to get started, I'll just put a very simple drum loop that I will be uh, modifying over time. Um, so here we have all the uh, things that we can use. We call them processes, and those are things that will, will just basically um, trigger things at um, various times. So for instance, if I want to have some sound. Okay, I'll just do this. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a bit too fast. So this is a very, very simple um, sound thing and now what if I want to um, control control this with some effect for instance if I want to apply some reverberation okay or maybe some bit crushing it's much more fun I think There is something running and now what if I want to for instance control this part or if say my, my joystick then I can uh, just go inside here and take okay I have my joysticks axis so for instance when I rotate it like that and I can just drag it here and I could want also to apply some effects on um, the river parameters. So let's say this on the wetness of my river. Okay, and this gives us a very simple um, basis of work. Now, what I want to do is to, <laughs> of course, build something a little bit more elaborate on this. Um, so I'll start by adding some drum loop. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Because this is going to be very boring very quickly. So. Um, mm -hmm. So at any point, one can just press play here. And if I do this, um, it will play only one time. So what I want to do is say, okay, I, I want you to, to keep running forever and do that. 
getting um, some echo from GC. Um, let me just close it. Okay, here we go. All right. Now, um, another thing that I may want to do is to play with um, live instruments. So, for instance, uh, what if I wanted to add some bass guitar on that? Uh, so, what I need to do is to add an audio device. And on this audio device, uh, so I know that my bass guitar input is um, one, two. Uh, so I'll do it like that. Okay. And I will add a looper here. So I can do, for instance, some level of uh, live looping. And I start my looping thing only when I'm ready. Um, record a whole bar and play forever, please. And we'll start at a very low volume. Yep, like that. OK. So now, um, here, it's waiting for me to start recording things. can start playing some effects, for instance. I have a set of patterns, so uh, I want to uh, do another pattern. Seems 
that I have uh, not set the right pitch, but it's okay. Here I may want to control this, for instance, add some effects after that sound with the movement of my hand over the air. Um, so for this event, I also try some effects. The uh, score supports various kinds of effects, and, um, EST, but also yes effects, like reverb effects, things like that. Um, yeah. So something like this. Just take here my motion. Okay, you on you here. various kinds of um, hardware and build some kind of uh, live uh, media systems. So um, this is the first example. Uh, let's do a second example quick. And this one, so maybe some of you have uh, recognized uh, this musical team. And if not, I will just uh, say that it is from uh, Robert Prince from the 90s. Um, all right, so we'll just leave that. Uh, so doing this means that uh, this part will never never play and it won't even use CPU resources. And now uh, what I want to do is to uh, use not only um, my bass as an input, but also um, something else. Um, so like this, we'll name it game. All right, and it will use my three and four inputs. Okay, don't care about you. Uh, uh, uh. And we want what a new scenario. Okay, so we are going to do our second work in this blank slate here. Okay, and here what we want is to um, have some video input so i have some scripts to launch okay um you for instance yes all right and this okay uh -uh -uh. let's see you Won't go here, you will go here. All right, perfect. Okay, and um, this. And now we want to use not only audio content, but also video content. So I'm going to add some uh, video input to my system. Okay, right here. And what I can do is say, um, okay, 
as soon as as soon as this score runs, I want to play my audio input. Again, I'll just put a gain effect, and as input, I'll say game. And let's see. Uh, so some of you may recognize the sound, and I will also add a video filter here. Uh, so. Um, Dance. So you can use shaders and things like that. And um, all right, and here I can start. start to recognize some, some stuff from other days. So what that you can do is take other things as uh, video inputs and process them. Um, for instance, I may also want to use you know, my joystick input to um, control things here, or my uh, for instance. So, so now I can play Zoom and So while applying the filters on the thing, I can do the same with audio. For instance, if I want to uh, add some effects on the sound output. And if I want, I can even use um, that's like visible meters. Um, say, okay, I want my audio input to go and control, uh, for instance, some video parameters. Which means that if I uh, uh, enter some sound effects, okay, and here, as you can see, it applies some video control on stuff. So yeah, so um, basically SCORE is a software which loves to, to combine all this kind of uh, media systems and things like that uh, and put them in a timeline and score them over time and well do um, do a kind of uh, yeah, live creation with various kind of media and then well play, make scores of it basically so that's the gist of it i'd say so um well if there are questions i think i can take them now yes thank you for this interesting short introduction into some things that OCR can do, or OCR score can do. Remember for the viewers out there, you can ask questions in the IRC or on Twitter or Mastodon. And yes, one, one thing I noticed, you had yet this presentation was mostly audio and video because that is yes. what works on an online conference. Yeah. But if I understand correctly, the intermedia aspect of OSIA encompasses far more than that. Yes, yeah, so basically, um, so we have this abstraction of our um, protocols. So, and uh, so in the system, you, you have all this set of protocols. So uh, for this uh, particular thing, I didn't use any kind of, for instance, network protocols, but it's super common in intermedia systems to use, for instance, the OSC protocol, which is a standard protocol across media apps to uh, to, to send messages to each other. For instance, one can have a pure data program or a processing program and communicate um, and be scored or send control messages to, to OSIA. Um, there is also built-in support for various kinds of hardware, so joysticks, remotes, um, so live motions like this. And uh, well, we are working on adding more, so you can also directly uh, use Arduinos and things like that. So if you have an Arduino, 
you, you can just um, plug it and start exchanging, exchanging messages on the serial port without having to go through some sort of bridge, uh, which uh, well is useful when you do stuff like kinetic installations, things like that. And uh, and we are looking forward at adding more protocols. So for instance, there has been more and more demand for IoT protocols, for instance, to like MQTT, things like that. Um, because people don't only want to do art, but they also apparently want to control their house and uh, turn on the lights at the right moment and things like that. And for this, uh, MQTT and things like that are uh, super useful protocols to have. And then it's an open system. And as soon as there is something useful that we hear of, then it's going on the roadmap as, yeah, it could be cool to have uh, that new way to control things. And um, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yes, there is also support for um, uh, light, um, you know, uh, DMX for stage lights, things like that. So you can uh, directly automate, for instance, uh, let's say, um, um, if you have a projector, you can directly uh, control it and send the DMX data through ArcNet or relevant protocols. So we try to make it usable for any kind of um, art show and uh, things like that, museum installations. So, yeah. <laughs> um, regarding all those features, is it, can you say that OSIA's score could be something like OBS Studio on Asset? Mm, good question. Well, um, for me, it's more complementary. I, I, I use OBS quite a, quite a bit um, for streaming, things like that. And for instance, um, from OSIA, you can, so OBS has this, uh, uh, OSC over WebSocket add-on and you, you can add it in OSIA and control, for instance, the scenes of OBS. So the idea is more to integrate with that kind of software. And if, if for instance, um, OSIA isn't going to have uh, streaming capabilities, I think, to Twitch or things like that, like OBS has. And it makes more sense for me to score OBS if that's needed, but leave to OBS what OBS does best. But then if someone wants to come and uh, have nice pull requests, then I will be happy to merge them. <laughs> so it's more like a stream deck on asset where you control OBS if you want yeah, to yeah, yeah. with everything in your environment. Mm -mm. But well, that, that's, that's today at least, and I don't know what the feature <laughs> has in store, so. Another question more related to the music part. Um, mm -hmm. Can you read classical sheet music? And do you think that classical mm. music education is useful or necessary to produce music? Oh, in general or in this context? In, in general, I'll say yes. <laughs> um, personally, I, I didn't have a, a classical music formation and actually I, I regret it a bit. And uh, uh, some things would have been much easier if I had taken a few classes on harmony and uh, <laughs> things like that. But um, for using score, it's not necessary. So in score, you can import MIDI files, for instance. Um, let's say I should have some okay, so very simple MIDI files like single chords. Or um, do we have some MIDI here? Um, not sure. It's okay. Not, well, you you, you not can add MIDI. Copyright anymore. If you play it, because then we get takedown notices. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a very good point. <laughs> um, so yeah, so um, there isn't um, direct sheet music notation. However, um, there is this project which I think was developed at uh, Gram. Uh, oh. Which is uh, Guido. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it was developed at, at no, it was developed at Gram, and it's an open source system for uh, rendering uh, notation. It's used, for instance, in the InScore software, and well, it's been uh, requested for a long time to add the Guido library to have some level of uh, rendering of uh, sheet music, but. Um, personally, I am barely able to read sheet music, so <laughs> it's not a super high priority for me. And my my uh, needs are covered with uh, simple MIDI files and things like that. But um, for instance, uh, we are working a lot with, um, uh, let's say, uh, composers from um, non-classical uh, pieces uh, and uh, um, music and um, contemporary, acousmatic, uh, music concrete, things like that. And we've been working into, uh, for a, uh, a partition um, uh, um, score, um, 
score writing system for uh, contemporary music, uh, which is called uh, Acousmoscript. So I don't have the demonstration here, but um, it's a separate way of rendering scores uh, adapted to contemporary music. And it was relatively easy to integrate. It's, it was done by a um, few students during the student project this year. And something similar for sheet music will be meaningful, I guess, if someone wants to do it. So <laughs> again, I'll be super happy to accept any pull requests, which uh, adds some uh, sheet music rendering to MIDI and score and things like that. Uh, talking about scores for songs, can you arrange a complete score in a complete song in Aussie with some interactive elements and then, for example, so, some actions at specific points? Yep. So for, for me, so that, that's my goal. So I come from the um, back in my proprietary lifetime <laughs> a decade ago. I, I was using a lot uh, Ableton Live to make music. And um, I really want to reach the point where what you can do in Ableton, you can also do it in score. Maybe not as easily because the, not everything is the same, of course, and both software do things uh, differently in some ways. But uh, at some point, I, I want to be able yeah, to, to write a whole song in it. What's missing as of today is um, good, uh, say, mixing user interface, for instance, to easily have, like, in all traditional sequencers, there is the idea of tracks and things like that that um, is always uh, present. And in scores, there is not real, well, there are things similar to tracks, like you can say, okay, uh, you uh, will, um, you for instance, will be a mixing bus, and then you can adjust the volume in here, but that's not enough, I think. Um, this, and also we lack, uh, and that's a focus for the next version, all the uh, recording things. Like right now, you can't record uh, audio or MIDI during the score, and I want this to be doable because for me, that's uh, the final frontier before starting to actually make songs. So um, it's on the roadmap. Uh, I'd say that today you can do it if you are really dedicated and if you say use Audacity or something like that next to it to record uh, songs. And at some point I want Score to be a fully fledged uh, digital workstation, but it's not there yet and uh, <laughs> working on it. Um, just to give maybe to the viewers an idea of what are the things that can be done with score, I can maybe quickly show the uh, gallery on the website, which uh, shows various uh, pieces that were done. For instance, uh, there are uh, modular pieces, there are um, live performance over the internet, for instance, um, there are uh, in, um, museum installations, there are um, plays, uh, stage plays, things like that. Um, yeah, various kind of things, but there isn't a single song in all of those. It's always, there's always often some musical element, but I don't think anyone wrote an entire, no, there is one. There is Piano Tronics number three from Alain Bonardi, uh, which is actually a piano piece, which was composed in score. So <laughs> there was one. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> score uses a graph editing feature, yeah. which is probably very easy to get started. Do you ever get lost in complicated graphs and hope for S expressions? Uh, so, <laughs> very good question. And uh, um, so, um, if you are used to say uh, pure data, max MSP, things like that, uh, for me, uh, so, so as you can see, uh, it's graphs. But what you'll notice is that, for instance, uh, the graphs that you have in score the objects are much bigger than the objects in, say, pure data or maximum SP. And uh, the idea is, is to have it's closer to, you know, um, devices and other software. So you don't have, for instance, something that just does a multiplication or something like that. You, you really have um, high level components, which do a lot of things and which are, I think, more usable by uh, composers and musicians. And uh, if you want to, on, on one hand, if you want to get down to the, um, so let's make a new document. So if you want to get down to a more precise level, you can just drop pure data patch and you can actually uh, edit pure data directly in score. And uh, so this one is a,
slight noise patch, for instance. And at the other end of the spectrum, if you really like coding, then um, you can use, for instance, right now, JavaScript. So you can have uh, some um, some JS script, which will, well, generate things. And if you are really motivated, but uh, here I'm not sure it will work on that computer. I'm not confident. No, it didn't work. But um, you can use uh, also C++. And at some point, there were, um, since the last two months, I had uh, three or four requests to introduce some uh, scheme dialect. So I, I've been, it, it's been on my roadmap to have some uh, level of, um, yeah, having an embedded Lisp. Um, but then I'm not a big Lisp person. I, I, I really like the language and I always think of the XKCD comic where you see uh, this bliss of um, um, people being in, God being in bliss about um, the universe being made of S expressions, but uh, <laughs> I'm more of an imperative and object-oriented person, but I, I recognize the need for it. And I think at some point there will be a way to to also put Lisp in here, like you can put uh, GS and you can put your data and it will be another language that you can use. So, yeah. um, Another question is if, can you use Ossia just for example, for the video and then link it somehow to Ableton or Bitwig for the music performance? Um, absolutely. So for instance, in, um, so, um, if you want synchronization on Linux, and for now it's only on Linux, uh, we support Jack Transport. So you can say, okay, that score will be, say, either a client of master, but well, you, you, you want something to be the master in that case because you want to drive uh, to have a single timeline for your whole system. And then um, there are a few things that allow, for instance, to, well, for instance, if you need to um, play back video, um, well, you, you, you you just do it. And if also what a case we had recently was wanting to use core with touch designer and uh, we support protocols for sending and receiving videos. For instance, uh, for the doom screen, I was doing it with Shum data, which is developed at SAT at Montreal. Uh, there is also experimental NDI support to be able to send video the network. Um, then uh, in France, we've been working on a uh, um, uh, public well, kind of publicly funded research project to um, um, allow, um, how to say, mainly it's mainly about uh, making a network of artworks and basically artworks where you have uh, three peoples in three different cities because, well, COVID and uh, all that uh, led to the need for such things. And as part of this, there is, of course, research on um, all that we need in terms of, you know, protocols for exchanging um, various kinds of media between software. So, uh, at some point, it should be possible relatively easily to say, okay, I want to maybe generate one sound at one point in score and I have most of the sound being done in live or between and things like that. So um, it's theoretically possible. I haven't done it much, uh, but I mean, I, I know that there's people like in, in this gallery page here, there are some stuff that uh, use uh, both score and live in the same, uh, in the same performance, for instance. So it's not unheard of. <laughs> There's another remark from the chat in the same direction, not quite a question, but he says that, yeah, integration is the, the, the uh, answer. You've showed all those protocols that OSIA supports and MIDI alone can sync many of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, MIDI just has this uh, small resolution problem, but um, yeah, the, uh, at first, when the first version of the software, it didn't even handle um, uh, audio or video first, it was only a controller uh, for other software. Um, but then at some point, we had a lot of people who were like, okay, but I just want to play a sound at five seconds. And I don't want to open, say, pure data and uh, to make a sound player. And then we added sound. And then people say the same thing with videos. So we also added the video. And now for simple things, well, you can do already a lot in score. But if you have a super complex uh, video or audio workflow in live between touch designer or whatever software you are using, then by all means use it. Because uh, at first, the software is a controller for other software. So um, 
it's, uh, it's, it's original uh, raison d'être. <laughs> yes, okay. 